Hey guys, welcome back to Team Draft Super League. Feels weird saying Team Draft Super League when I'm joined by David Williams. It's been so many times that we've done vintage Super League chat, but this is the format of Kings. I mean, Team or Vintage is the format of what it, what goes what's above Kings? Really rich people. Oh well, this is the biggest format. nightlife industry. But yeah. Team Draft Super League. Team draft is the greatest format. I mean, I'm, obviously, I'm having a blast. My record, it, it's been going pretty well. I guess you're undefeated, too, though. <laughs> Feeling pretty good no, with your deck? I got smashed by Vanessa's unplayable garbage. Oh. Um, well. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he had his... Uh, I had a duck draw, but he, he loaded the wrong deck, so I had to get rid of it. And That you know, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. And then he had one, and my next draw, I flooded out, and he played turn two Channeler, turn three Ronis Champion, turn four put a 4-4 four, four Indestructible Flyer into play. So have we shown Ben's deck? Do have people have have we heard about it in the chat? Uh, well, they the have the deck list. It's not on camera, but they have the deck list. Okay, so the chat does have the deck list. I'm looking at it now for the first time. I haven't seen it. Honestly, we were trying to talk during during deck building, get some ideas, and it just took so long for Ben to figure out what his Skype was that there was like four minutes on the clock. Everyone's talking over each other. Eventually, we just all had to submit whatever we had. And I mean, obviously, it's magic. Like, you know, you, you can build a deck. It's not necessarily the end of the world. But I didn't even know what color Ben was. And so Ben left to go do commentary. And I'm still on the line with Luis. And we're trying to figure out, like, we're like, there's two start to finishes. Did you see them? I'm like, no, I didn't see either of those. They're like, oh, well, they must have both of them. I'm like, well, Ben could have taken it. We don't even know what color Ben is. He hasn't mentioned anything yet. And so, yeah, it turns out that Ben did pick up both copies of start to finish, which... Would have been pretty nice in my deck. That hearing uh, th that a couple of those got open, and I'm sitting in white and black, just just waiting for an, a nice juicy gold card like that. But uh, didn't come around. But my deck is pretty great. Somehow pretty my good. teammates both have white trial on their sideboards. I'm, <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited that you know one of them was correctly prevented from going to you, and one of them. Yeah, that I, I don't even. I honestly probably just it. lost That's it. The crazy part. No, I know, but I mean at that point. Yeah, why did Ben pass it? What did he take? He is white, right? He, he took Gust Walker over it, which Gust Walker's great, but it's not white trial. No, I mean Ben. I mean, I, I watched the the video that is posted on Channel Fireball where your team discusses their picks and how they have you the format, and a lot of things were very similar on. And Ben, you know, kind of led our limited meeting. He has trial as the best uncommon set and better than you know. Not as many, like, you guys have it as, like, the fourth best card in the set, some people on your team. We don't have it that high, but it's pretty high up there. Like, it's above tons of rares. And Ben is, is very much in that camp. So I'm not sure exactly what was going on with that. Um, if he just felt like he needed twos, if he felt like, <laughs> I, I don't know, that the trial just couldn't be used. I guess it ended up working out pretty good if it's just sitting in Matt's sideboard. I'm but, just trying you know, to figure out how Paul knew to pass it to Ben, and which turns out it was actually wrong, and then it ended up Ben made the bad, a bad pick, and he can defend it only once. It's a bad pick. And somehow it ends up in Matt's sideboard. It's like, what is going on in this draft? But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with how my seat turned out. I mean, I passed to you the best card in the pack being Gus Walker. Obviously, you took Gus Walker second pick, and I'm just mono white. Like, the end of pack one, I'm mono-white. I'm not passing anything but kind of the shaft creatures. I know I'm passing some good green, but <laughs> it looks like you opened uh, Glorybound Initiate and prepared a fight, so... Yeah, well, the thing about white is white is so deep. Yeah, we, it really is. Every, I think there's 14 different commons in white, and they're all actually playable in decks. There's not a white card that you would just not play. So white yes, is the color, if you're going to be getting stepped on, that you can easily afford to do. Yeah, but if your creatures will still get outclassed. Like, your deck will be playable, and you can play Sacred Cat in any of your white decks, and you can play, you know, all the, the 11th and 12th best white commons, as you said. They're, they're certainly playable cards, but they're not great. And so, you well, know, you really need the deck. Like, Mighty Leap is one of the weakest white cards. You have two of them in your deck, but it's pretty damn good when you have, you know, the green creatures, and you have Hooded Brawlers and Initiates Companions that, like, you know, really really could use the boost sent into the air. It's just going to be really strong. So well, that's your deck... Point. Saying the yeah, white, yeah. no, I'm agreeing with you. I'm yeah. agreeing with white, you. white is the color where if you're going to get stepped on, it's the one to be because the set actually isn't really that deep in the other colors. I mean, a lot of the colors, like black, doesn't have very many good playables at all, and they dry up pretty fast. And a lot of the cards are very niche, like only go with certain kind of archetypes. So it's really, it's really an interesting spot. I mean, black doesn't have 14 commons that are playable, but I believe your team had like Splendid Agony is like the ninth best black common, and there, there's no universe where that card is bad. 
Like that card goes in all your black decks. It's a it's a very reasonable combat trick and removal spell. Not great. You know, no one's claiming that this is like, you know, a first pick. But when you're comparing it to, you know, how deep white is, black actually is pretty deep. It's it's got a lot of cards that, I just you know, think, are very similar to white that you you can play them, but you're not necessarily thrilled. Yeah, I just think the format is really all about really aggressive curve based draws, low land counts, and you get a bad rate on Splendid Agony. I mean, three mana for that. Sure, I play it. I don't know if it's ninth worst, ninth ninth best black common, but the rate is pretty bad. I mean, final reward also pretty bad rate. I mean, the kind of decks I like to see, I draft and I see winning, are just quick curve beatdown decks where if you want to spend three mana to kill a guy, sure, go ahead. Well, it, it, exactly the decks that you're describing and Splendid Agony is kind of at its best because, you know, if they do play Initiates Companions and they play, you're you right. know, the, the Entanglers and the Pathmaker Initiates and all these creatures have one toughness. Like, if you kill a creature and shrink another one so it can't attack or you kill two creatures, that's insane. And so, you know, you're, you're kind of looking at the floor being a mediocre removal spell and the ceiling being just like, well, this was bonkers. I just killed their two and three job. Like, your deck is playing multiple Initiates Companions and multiple three ones for three. Like... It's nuts. Like Splendid Agony just just can completely change a game. So, um, not. I mean, we're talking about Splendid Agony a lot. I was just trying to discuss how how deep black is that there actually are a lot of good commons that you're you're happy not necessarily put in every deck, but that are they're pretty good. So, uh, what match do we say we were watching? Someone fill me in again. I know well, I was you can figure it out half of it. We're waiting because Ben S doesn't understand technology, so we're playing Ben against I believe Matt. So it's kind of a a battle of, I would say, the worst decks on each team. Um, is Ben's deck bad? I mean, I know people probably assume it's bad good. because it's because it's you know three colors, it has mediocre mana, but I like a lot of things in Ben's deck. I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything ridiculous like his deck is great. I mean, it's got you know a lot of cards that are are kind of filler, you know, but. Those are also in some of the good decks. Like your deck is quite good, and you have the same cards in your deck as as the filler cards. And you know his top end, this channel or Nishia's champion of Ronus, the Ancrop champion, the start to finishes, the cruel reality. Depending on the matchup, not great against Ben, but might be great against Paul, or not great against Matt, but could be great against Paul. Um, a, a lot of good creatures, a handful of filler cards, interesting mana. Ben loves the Cradle of the Accursed. What do you think of that card? Not a big fan, especially in a three color deck. I mean. You know, I don't mind it in a nice yeah. two-color deck where you, you want to don't know if you want to play that 17th land or not, but three-color decks, it seems a little greedy. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty low on the card. I assume he just wanted to play 16 lands in his deck, but it was a 17-land deck, and so he chose a colorless land. I haven't, you know, talked to him about it yet, but I, I'm really low on that card. And I know that he was early on in our testing, he's like, well, you don't cut that card from any deck. You just play it in all your decks. And then he kind of came off that a little bit. We're just like... No, the card, the card is fine. Like you don't have any zombie, you know, synergy. You know, a lot of the decks are playing sixteen lands. So you don't really want to play fifteen color sources in that thing. And so he came down off it. It felt like quite a bit, but he did pick up two evolving wilds, which are real nice. The cascading cataracts will make casting a card like Cool Reality, you know, pretty easy in the late game. Um, he's got a bunch of pouncing cheetahs. Who knows? So some good news for your team. Luis is already up a game. Seriously, I didn't know they started. Yeah, they already started. I think so, from now on, so, this match should always be the backup match, just to give him. T <laughs> Although he still has to set up hand cam, so you know who knows if he'll if he'll make it. So I don't know if this has already been discussed, but Paul had a pretty massive parlay on Owen and Ben S both having not read the emails of what to do each week, and he, he didn't even come close to losing. Like he won this with flying colors. They, they, they apparently didn't even skim it. Like, this is pretty incredible. Do we have any update on what is going on with uh, with whole Benjamin? All right. Can we look in on the other match, maybe? No, that's probably too ridiculous. Let's just wait for Ben to uh, figure out how to use Google Hangouts. It's a complicated program. It involves you having to click on a button that says your screen, and, and that's it. But, you know, you do have to be able to do that. And so that's where we're at. It looks like Ben has finally figured out where that button was. So we should be getting started any moments now. Any moment now. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in this match? You said it's a battle of the two worst decks, but uh, two pretty great players. We've, been, we've both known them for 15-plus years at this point. So I'm a not long time. 
I'm not too big on Matt's deck, and I think the problem with Ben's deck is it seems like it lines up badly against the, what I think the optimal way to draft this format is, which I don't think Matt did, which is a sort of fast, aggressive deck. I think Matt's deck... You're saying you don't of, think Matt did that? No, I think Matt's deck did it improperly. It has a lot of kind of... A lot of just slow cards that don't do what you want to do. And I think it, like Bantu is a blank. I think in his deck it doesn't really do anything. I think the card's pretty bad. So you know against me on turn five or on turn four, he had five creatures out. I haven't actually looked at. I mean, I'm looking at it now, but literally in game one on turn four, he had five creatures in play. Yeah, I just it doesn't seem like it seals the deal very well, and I could see him giving Ben a lot of time to do what Ben's deck wants to do. I mean, he does have some two drops, and he has an insider and a crasher, but I just feel like he has too many cards that, like, like Nimble Blade, Kanhara, and five drops. You know, it's, he does have a, the red trial and two black cartouches, so that can be an incredible amount of value against Ben's deck. That it is, you know, if the game does go a little bit long, he's got that a little bit of that staying power, and then maybe some of these five drops can can actually show their power. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I just and I, I feel like, I mean, he, he does. I mean, he, maybe he does line up well against Ben's deck now that I look at the list. Like, Splendid Agony gives him kind of an answer to the 4-4 Flying Indestructible or to, like, a Colossipede. So, I mean, he's got some some tech. I, I just I feel like it's going to slow down. Ben is going to be able to slow it down, and then the uh, the seven-mana Cruel Enchant player thing can easily just take over that match. Sure, yeah. So I mean, like, that's not really the card you expect against the deck that has, you know, multiple one-drops and a bunch of two-drops for... Uh, <laughs> for the cruel really seven mana chance but you know he yeah, really like, has 14 creatures yeah no that makes perfect sense i mean he is playing a, a deck that wants to be really aggressive again has multiple one drops let alone two drops and he has to play 17 lands so yeah what you're saying makes perfect sense and, and <clears> a tormenting <throat> voice i think that's kind of what happened against me like he ended up playing bontu and he was just basically just didn't play any more spells like he discarded you know like a sixth, seventh, and maybe eighth land to to the battlefield scavengers and to tormenting voice, and just wasn't even casting spells. Just had to play a lot of lands in his deck that really doesn't want to go that far. And also, in one of the games, kind of stalled on four mana for a little bit with I assume five drops in his hand. So, yeah, that 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 can definitely struggle to come together sometimes. I think my team also is at a big disadvantage because I was on a different protesting team than Matt and Paul, so our draft strategies are quite different. And is that a bad thing? I, I think so because well, I think so for the for the morale. Like I, I'm not happy with some of their picks. You know, look at the picks or, or their deck, certain things. Whereas they probably disagree with me. I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong, but you don't get to be on that same page. And I think that's a huge thing, key to success in team drafts, and why we've had so much success in the past is that we are on the same page. We know how each other's draft. We know what's going through to each other and what we're likely to take and who's likely to be on one color. Whereas in this draft, I was kind of in the dark as to like. If the blue card's coming, is Paul floating stuff through or not? You know, those kind of things I wouldn't pick up on as much. So, sounds like Ben has finally figured out how to use computers. And so we are going to throw you right down to the match and, uh, and check this one out. You got no intro. We are just ready to jump right in. Ben Stark on the bottom, playing three-color nonsense. Ooh, He's got horse and swamps and <laughs> Gus Walker and no planes. <clears throat> Match looks and good. he's got a seven drop white, so if he does finally draw lands, it'll be his sixth and seventh. You know, he'll actually get to where he needs to be to play the the eight. keep. Is this a hand that you just keep? Um, lands to see. No, I don't keep. And it looks like he is undefeated in die rolls. So Ben's playing four planes, two evolving wilds. Oh, no, so. he, did, he didn't. Paul uh, Matt won the die roll. And Matt has a great start with the insider. Missing a two drop, and Ben kept, and he was rewarded with a double green card. <laughs> and Matt was rewarded with a two drop, which is insane right here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's there's no arguing that uh, that the Scottsdale Foundation is definitely the luckier team. It's not close, but <laughs> we're gonna do our best. No, the three Luis's luck kind of trumps all. I think. Okay, okay. This guy opened a glory bringer, pick one, pack one. And I was telling my friend, man, I hope I open a glory bringer when I start this draft. So, because you didn't open a glory bringer, your team is incredibly unlucky. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, now this you is... opened a bunch of in colorers. <laughs> this looks like a, a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, this draw is, is exactly what he wants it to be. Just a base curve, planes, removal spell. I mean, the planes is going to allow Ben to go two, three, four. Oh yeah. 
No, I mean, Ben drew the best card in his deck, probably on both turns, but so did Matt, so we're back in that well, same interesting spot. here. Do you Splendid yeah. Agony and kill the Gus Walker, or do you just play Thresher Lizard, haste it up, and send your team? That's close. <clears throat> I think you kill it. I'm, I would lean towards killing it, but I have a, a small degree of confidence in that. Because I like you get to get in more damage here, and the Gus is going to be a problem, and you don't want it to block your Thresher Lizard anyway, because that's going to be your, your bread and butter when this game gets locked down. This is another solid draw. Looks like Paul has now evened it up against Luis. Go that's on to game three. <clears throat> I think he's going to send that Thresher Lizard in here, which is nice. Offer him a trade. I think with Ben's draw, looking with a 2-4 back to block, I could see some reasons where Ben might not block, but being at 15 against the Bloodlust Initia, uh, you just got to block, I think. Insider, excuse me. And now that's going to get the super... Find a supply caravan? <laughs> well, Ben does have access to the deck list, so when this attack happens... He should be able to deduce what there can be. And those options are Supernatural Stamina and Splendid Agony, which are both pretty bad for him blocking. So there's a, some chance he chooses to just take two here, try to attack and get that Caravan down, which will be a much better blocker against both of those spells. Right, and if he doesn't block, he gets to attack with his Spider and then play the Caravan and get some value out of it and being a 1-1 one, one Vigilance token. So all that adds up, I don't think we see a block here soon. That was an impressive echo, I have to say. <laughs> Well, you, you didn't mention the token. You didn't mention tax. I said to get the, the value off the supply caravan. <laughs> oh, I didn't, hear. I didn't hear value. Well, otherwise, attacking with the giant spider is pretty loose. Yeah, and here goes uh, blank. Right. Three mana do nothing. <laughs> I hope he gets the yeah, main, it's pretty oops, medium here. game with that card, but it's pretty bad. So he's going to go ahead and get it out while he can instead of the Colossipede and get the token out. Yeah, he's... This Bontu, I mean, you call it a do-nothing, but by that same token, I mean, it's not... I guess the Supply Caravan actually blocks it decently well. Oh, Supernatural exactly. Stamina makes it out a little bit bad. I mean, you're sacrificing a creature to... I mean, the Force Six Menace is just not easy to block. Yeah, and it does line up well if you double block. Stamina gets rid of both. So I could see just sacking this Bloodlust Insider. Or this Adept. Yeah, I guess the Adept's a better sack right now, even though it has medicine itself, and it could get get through. I guess he is at 12, and the, the drains. I, I guess I hope he makes me look foolish and wins with this bond too, but <laughs> the card, I, I feel, has been just quite a disappointment every time I've had it. Yeah, it doesn't take necessarily the... Uh, it, it, it's tough to make the card be truly outstanding, although here it's already done five damage. I mean, he did have to lose his ad at four, but he got a scry out of it. It's not terrible there. Gives him a little bit of reach. Not the most. And Ben S is one planes away from getting out of four for indestructible, but if he gets that champion out, he can have sort of chump attack it if he wants to get the angel out and doesn't even have to be a chump attack. Yeah, I mean, if, if Matt finds a land, it's, it would be a chump attack, but otherwise, he has, a, he has a pretty solid attack. So it looks like he's going to go for that play instead of the Colossipede, because getting that angel out protects him from anything Bantu can do. He will have to block with another creature with it, but... Ooh! Now this Initiate could be how he can get those last points of damage. Being at 8, the Bantu drains are a real thing. Yep. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Ben's plan here was. I guess... He's probably looking to chump block the spider, throw the token in there. Oh, I mean, Bantu can only kill one of those two creatures. Yeah, I think if I'm Matt here, I like maybe just initiate go, and you get to keep two mana up, which prevents you from getting attacked back on the ground, because you could always just sack and eat something. And it sets you up for using the initiate to get through two with your scavenger to get him a six. You can get a loot in there, and then you can Bantu him out if you want. So... Oh, yeah, you forgot. You can give it. It's even better reason to leave it back. Oh, is he, he going to send both? No. What? Did he mess up? Did oh, he, he's sacking, he, he sacked he's the, sacking the haste thing and attacking with That's, his two creatures. He's going to give the scrounger unblockable after scrying, yeah.
So or he's looking at a black cartouche. This, so this play, he's at seven. He's going to take two. He needs to make sure he gives this guy unblockable. And he bottomed it. So he can loot away and get a free cycle if he wants. But this is actually perfect because he's going to go to five. And then he can make it unblockable and stamina it to do four and then sack it to finish him off. So it looks like he actually might be able to finish him off. Um, assuming, yep, Ben didn't draw anything. So he has the the win. He needs one more mana, right? No, he doesn't. Yeah, the bond two is busted. He doesn't need any mana. And it sounds like Paul has a black cartouche on Colossipede. Yeah, Luis stalled on lands for a couple turns, and now he's just getting pummeled by a 6-6 lifelinker. So he's going to tap out for Colossipede, and then Matt's going to just give unblockable attack, stamina, sacrifice, that's game. Luis is right, so, Yeah, this is a Bantu pretty day. nice turn of events for uh, for the foundation using luck and luck alone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is he going to show off and BM him and play the Magma Spray too just because on his creature? <laughs> Should loot away his magma spray just for the brags. Because with decklist, he knows there's nothing Ben can do. <laughs> All right, so, so Matt takes, takes game one. one. That was a good game. Makes me look foolish, which is which was my goal. Because either I look like a genius or I get a win. So I'll take <laughs> I'll take it. Sweet free roll there. Um, I mean, Bantu ended up being quite nice. Ben's deck a little on the slow side. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of punished him. He didn't have good blocks. He took four damage once, and then it just represented a few damage. Matt kind of found the perfect card in, in a number of spots. I mean, Ben did, too. It's not like Matt got exceptionally lucky. Ben's opening hand was not great. He ended up curving out despite having, you know, <laughs> needing to draw one of his six white sources and drawing a three drop. He had neither of them in his opening hand. But, uh, you know, that scavenger was really good, and that Pathmaker initiate was, was kind of, was just backbreaking. I mean, I guess there, there's no better way to put that, like, that ended up winning the game and putting the, the final points over the top. So yeah. our is probably not going to change too much, I'm guessing. Yeah, as we talked about, I heard uh, someone say, um, sideboarding, I think someone wrote that, there's not really sideboards in three-on-three, three, not much, because you're, you're spending your picks on cards for your deck and, and preventing cards for your opponent's deck where it's hard to really pick up good sideboard options. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Ben's already stretched into a third color. He's playing main deck Stinging Shot. He's got all sorts of nonsense cards on his deck. So, I mean, maybe there's going to be a card or two. Like, I ended up boarding against Matt because we didn't have deck list in round one. And like I said, he had five creatures out on turn four. So I boarded out, you know, I have two painful lessons in my deck, which ended up being very good in round two. But against, you know, one drop, two drop, two drop, one drop, another creature... It, it wasn't too exciting, so I ended up boarding in like a Dune Beetle and an Anointer Priest and, and tried to go that route. Sounds like from the updates, uh, your man Luis just top-decked Glorybringer to turn the tables, and now he is uh, firmly in control, if not. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was top-deck, but uh, he definitely did have a Glorybringer. I mean, this... Well, an and Essence Scatter on Plague so Beetle, but I mean, all of Luis's creatures are, are not untapping. Cannot see the player's hands, but Luis definitely has a nice board position. Put it that way. Retool's going to need to rip here. Sperling. I don't know what there is in the format, and Luis takes it. Sperling needs a swamp. Well, the, the trial is, is a nice one. That's, that's a good follow-up. And having the scrounger to be able to start looting is pretty nice as well. So right now, Team Good Guys up 4-1. to one. Sperling is up a game, though. He's going to need to take this match to prolong the series. So it looks like and he's, I, he's in pretty good shape to do it. Ben's deck is not super exciting. It, like What you said in the pregame about being good... In the, it being good in this matchup might be true, but it's not good against the draws that Sperling has actually had. So interesting, Matt chose not to loot there, which... He's been doing that a lot. And Ben... He did that against me several times. Matt chose not to rummage. 
Which I kind of see where he's coming from. Your black cards are both important in this matchup, as is Magma Spray. And this turn, if he can play two red cards, you know, before he drew his other two drop, he can play the Nimble Blade and the Flame Blade. So I kind of see where he's coming from. I'm surprised he didn't rummage the second time. The first time makes sense to me because, you know, Ben doesn't have a blocker. He has a removable spell. He can rummage during attack, although it is worse if he's planning on using something like Supernatural Stamina. But there wasn't like a black card he necessarily wanted to cast you know, in, in his first main phase. So being able to rummage the second time means he's getting in, you know, four damage over those two turns instead of two, you know, since the thing wouldn't untie. I mean, I guess so it's definitely just take a turn off of attacking, because that is the drawback, you know, you don't get to attack yeah. next turn, but he's exerting now, and I think it's fine. You can get rid of the mountain. You don't need a fourth mountain. You can still play both your red cards if you do brick on drawing a swamp. If he does draw a swamp, this game's just completely over. If he doesn't draw a swamp, this game is still completely over, but... He did draw another mountain, so Ben's able to get a planes here, and he'll have four, maybe five mana, which will allow him to play either a 3-5 or just the quarry hauler if he wants, but he's kind of up against it, and with being able to give a creature unblockable every turn, like you start to finish, actually, which is huge, two 1-1s. One um, because it's mean, a so huge... It's well, it's going to be able, if he wants, like, one guy's exerted, if he says go, the initiate's likely attacking, which will get blocked by one of the tokens, and he can leave one back if he wants and use it later to sack. I mean, he has options. I think it's going to be huge also, because he can play this, and now it's going to... Just giving him two surprise blockers was really big against Matt's deck. Messes up Menace calculations. <laughs> Those tough calculations of one plus one to two blockers. Well, no, but when you're seeing... No, I, I know, I know. I am not... I understand this, too. All right, so two points of unblockable coming through. Sperling getting punished a little bit from discarding the land and then finding what would have been a really good play. Like, if he had discarded one of the black cards on a previous turn and played his mountain, that True Heart Twins might have just ended the game. This Supply Caravan is, is decent again in this spot. I mean, he's getting that 1-1 one, one extra value, although I think the Swamp may just end it. I mean, not literally this turn, but, I mean, it's over. The Trial's coming back. So the question <laughs> yeah, is... Yeah, this, this is super over. Yeah, he can kill the, he can kill the token... Put it on, or you can give something unblockable first. Give the the battlefield scrounger unblockable. Put it on the scrounger. Yeah, I mean he could put it on the uh, the prowess guy. You know, make it unblockable first. Get in for four unblockable to put Ben. Yeah, I think that's the best because that puts Ben to six, and the trial goes back to his hand, and then that thing's a two four prowess, so he can just make it unblockable next turn. Play the trial, and that's six. Right. Through anything. So if he, assuming he doesn't miss it, it's going to be 4-2. We're going to need to get all the games against you, all the matches against you guys. Uh, me versus you, I know, is scheduled to be the final, if necessary, match, which is... Uh, I'd like to have the ball in my hand at the end, but I'd rather just close this out. <laughs> well, you still have another match to play, correct? I play you at the end. I'm no, you, oh, you've already played two? Yeah. Okay. Because your deck is the one that's going to be tough. I mean, Everyone should have played two, I imagine. I mean, this is going to be the sixth match, so I hope that's the case. Interesting. Matt didn't... I guess he put him at eight. Maybe he wants to do it all in the same turn if he draws a land. Although I guess when you make it unblockable and exert with the true heart and itself, it does four already. So he can actually start the turn by making it unblockable, and then he can put the cartouche on it, and then he can attack with both and exert, and then the scrounger itself becomes a five power, and then he can play the trial back and kill him. Because the true heart can run both exertions. All roads point to him winning this game. Right, I'm just saying right now, the, all he has to do is give his, give his scrounger unblockable, cartouche it, Where is he putting this cartouche, and why didn't he give it unblockable first? You can still do that. Yeah, he doesn't even have to make this unblockable. He can kill off two of the creatures. If that's his plan. To start to finish, messes that up a little bit. Yeah, that's the only issue with this play. Instead of just making something unblockable and going to the face... Start to finish does really kind of screw up what would be a, a just dead on board. Is it still dead on board though? Uh, if he exerts both, yeah, he's I definitely think. exerting both. 
It would be absurd not to. So he could block one, block there, block there. No, he's not dead on board. No? Maybe. Oh, two. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. All right. So the foundation on the board again. They got their second match win. Ben falls to one and one. What match is up next? So Luis versus Matt. So we really need Matt to dodge the glory bringers. Pull up and get it close. Then we need Paul to... They really should put Paul versus Ben next. We should put the ones most likely to prolong the evening. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, although, if Matt does beat Luis, it, it does mean that we are, of course, very likely to see a match nine. Paul's deck looks like it's going to be really good in that matchup. I mean... I do actually think that it will be a good games, but that, you know, Paul is reasonably advantaged, and he has, what's the green-black split card, start to finish? Oh, no, that's the white-black one. What's Destined to lead. Has? Destined to lead. That's going to be tough for uh, for this Abazan deck to deal with. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think that we actually have, all three matches should be pretty good. Um, again, I, I agree with you. I think that, that Paul is probably the bigger favorite, and Luis is probably the bigger favorite in the two matches coming up, but... You know, Matt's deck, we saw the draws it's capable of. If he gets a draw like this, I mean, Glorybringer wouldn't have beaten that. Like, right. that draw was just great. I mean, both of them were. And so, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Luis's deck is a little bit on the slow side. He's got some good clunky cards. I mean, Angler Drake, Glorybringer. He's got a bunch of True Heart twins, too. There are a lot of those in the draft. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned. Got more Super League coming up next. 